In order to live your best life despite having a mess, I need you to exercise as part of your lifestyle. Now it's very easy for me to sit here and tell you to go exercise, and it's downright hard to get out there and hoof it. My name's Aaron Boster, I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio, and in this video series I'm helping you demystify exercising in the setting of MS. If you've missed prior videos in this series, don't fret, I'll throw a card up here so you can check that out later. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the benefits of exercising. Literally, why is it so amazing? Don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Hey! Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. In this video series, I'm helping you demystify exercising with multiple sclerosis. And in this video in specific, I want to do a deep dive sharing with you the multiple, multiple benefits that one can experience through exercise. Grab a pen and paper and let's jump in. Number one is heart health, literally improving your cardiovascular health. Exercising as part of your lifestyle lowers your blood pressure. It lowers your cholesterol. It helps better control your sugar. And it strengthens the actual muscle of the heart so that it can pump more efficiently. Exercising is an outstanding way of optimizing heart health. Number two is brain health. Just like with heart health, exercising as part of your lifestyle helps slow the hardening of the arteries in your brain. It helps slow brain volume loss, and it helps preserve the neurologic reserve. Exercise is one of the least appreciated disease-modifying therapies to slow down MS, largely in part because of the benefits to brain health. We want to keep the organ as healthy as we can, as long as we can. And exercise is one of the key ways of doing exactly that. Number three, extending longevity, living longer, a longer life expectancy. Quite literally, people who exercise as part of their lifestyle live longer. And in the setting of multiple sclerosis, people with MS who exercise end up less disabled at the end of their lives. Number four is improved balance and coordination. One of the key elements that we want to cultivate when exercising in the setting of MS is to improve balance. And there are a host of fun exercises that we can do to make ourselves better at walking, transferring, positioning, reaching, all the like, with the goal of not falling. Number five is leg and core strength, which buttresses against an attack. Allow me to explain. Imagine that we cloned you, so we'd have to get permission from your family, so now there's two versions of you. One version we give Days of Our Lives TV, and the other version we give an elliptical, and then we get back together in a couple years. The version that's been watching TV is really out of shape with weak core and weak legs, but knows a lot about TV. And the version that we gave the elliptical to is in shape with a strong core and strong legs. Now let's imagine that both clones suffer an attack of left leg weakness. The clone that was watching TV is stuck in a wheelchair, unable to get up, whereas the clone that had been using the elliptical is walking with a mild limp. Now, I'm not going to insult you and ask you which one you want to be. It's literally a rhetorical question, making the point that exercise buttresses against attacks. Number six is literally decreasing the risk of falls. If you think about improving balance and improving leg strength, that directly correlates into falling less often. There was a really cool study done with 80-year-old men, no MS, just guys that were 80 years old. And they had some of them take some fall preventative classes, like learning tricks and tips. And another group literally did squat workouts in a gymnasium. What they found was the guys that squatted fell a lot less often. And I want that to be the experience that you have. Exercising decreases falls, which is a really good idea. Number seven is improving your activities of daily living. If you have a strong core, flexible limbs, if you have strong legs and good motor endurance, you're going to carry a basket full of clothes up the stairs more safely. You're going to mow the lawn with less energy expended. You're going to get through your daily activities with much more success. And that is a really great idea. Number eight is bone health. People impacted by MS, both men and women over the age of 50, have an accelerated bone loss with a higher risk of developing osteopenia and osteoporosis. This is very serious because it can lead to a pathologic fracture and a broken hip, God forbid. Exercising, particularly stomping on the ground, so walking, jogging, running, lifting weights, these kind of activities 
cause reactive bone growth, and they literally make the bones denser and stronger, decreasing risk of fracture. Very, very important. People impacted by MS can suffer from slow gut motility and problems moving their bowels. Number nine is bowel improvements. Exercising strengthens the pelvic floor. This can make it easier to hold on to stool before you want to let it go and to get rid of it when it's time to go to the bathroom. Also, exercise stimulates your gut motility and can help you move your bowels on a regular basis. Number 10 still has to do with the down there's. By strengthening the pelvic floor, we can also improve bladder function. All too often, people impacted by MS can have difficulties with bladder, whether that be urgency and frequency and accidents and near accidents or difficulty emptying. By exercising and strengthening the pelvic floor, you can have much better control over your urine output. Number 11 is improving sex. You heard me right. Exercising as part of your lifestyle can have massive benefits in the bedroom. Not just because you've strengthened the pelvic floor and so the mechanics of intercourse becomes easier, but you're also more flexible, you have better core strength, you have better motor endurance, and you can last longer and have a better time doing more fun activities in the bedroom with your partner. Improving sexual function is a great benefit to exercising as part of your lifestyle. Number 12 is social interaction. People impacted by MS have a very high risk for social isolation where they aren't going out into the community the way that they once were and they can end up kind of by themselves at home. Social isolation is a nasty creature and it can definitely lead to increase in depression and anxiety and kind of ruin the quality of someone's life. Participating in exercise is an opportunity to engage with others. Whether you are walking out in your neighborhood and you wave hi to your neighbor, or whether you're going into a gymnasium and you see the other gym goers, whether you're participating in an exercise class where you're doing something active with someone, or whether you're playing a formal sport where you're on a team, these are all awesome opportunities to engage with your community and to get out into the, uh, the public domain. The reality is that stress worsens multiple sclerosis. So any efforts that we have to manage stress pay dividends. Exercise is an awesome opportunity to practice mindfulness, which I define as being in the present moment without prejudice. Participating in athletic activity, not worrying about things that you missed yesterday and not worrying about things that might happen tomorrow. Losing yourself in the activity, really engrossing yourself in the exercise is an awesome opportunity to cultivate mindfulness and to help manage stress. Real quick before we go on, if you have found some value in this video, do me a kind favor and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Thank you! Number 14 is creating structure. If you know that you're going to the gym Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m., it allows you to schedule doctor's appointments, social outings, meals, shopping around those events and it can be very, very helpful for creating a sense of structure and guidance throughout the course of your week. Number 15 is a big one. People impacted by MS are at risk of having brain shrinkage or brain atrophy at a rate much faster than the general population. Brain volume loss or brain atrophy correlates with a lot of really bad things like faster progression of disability and cognitive impairment. Exercise quite literally maintains brain volume. It helps preserve the neurologic reserve. And so by exercising, we can keep our brains as big as possible. And that is a huge benefit in the setting of MS. Piggybacking off number 15, number 16 is maintaining cognition, thinking and memory. Upwards of 70% of people impacted by MS can suffer from some form of cognitive impairment, typically problems with attention. And we spend a lot of energy in clinic trying to amplify thinking and memory. One of the most powerful ways to do that is to exercise as part of your lifestyle. The data is very compelling that people with MS who exercise maintain their thinking and memory much better than those that don't. The reality is that people impacted by MS are twice as likely to experience depression or anxiety. Exercise is a potent antidepressant and anxiolytic. And so number 17 is benefits to mood through exercise. Number 18 is pain management. MS hurts. There are a multitude of different kinds of pain someone with MS can experience. I have several videos on this channel talking about that. One of the many ways of controlling pain in the setting of MS is through exercise. 
Quite literally, people impacted by MS who exercise as part of their lifestyle are able to ratchet down their levels of pain. Similarly, spasticity is all too common in the setting of MS. Literally upwards of 70% of people impacted by MS have spasms, cramps, and charley horses. And when it's cold outside like it is in the winter right now, spasticity goes way up. Exercise is an awesome way of reducing spasticity. Many of my patients, particularly during the winter months, learn to stretch when they wake up in the morning, stretch before they get in bed uh, at night, and then stretch once in the middle of their workday and massively decrease their spasticity. Number 20 is weight management. Exercising as part of your lifestyle helps raise your core body metabolism and helps you burn more calories even when you're sleeping. And so people that commit themselves to exercise have a much better time of controlling weight. Now in this setting of MS, that takes on a particular value. If you are carrying 10 extra pounds on your belly and you have a weak left leg, that's 10 extra pounds that weak left leg has to walk with. If you lose weight, that's 10 less pounds on that weak leg, which can make the difference between walking successfully and risk of fall. Number 20, exercise literally can help with speaking and swallowing. Unfortunately, sometimes people impacted by MS can have what's called dysphagia, where they have trouble swallowing, or dysarthria, where they slur their speech, or hypophonia, where they don't pronounce things loud enough. Exercise that helps the bellows, the lungs, can actually improve your ability to speak and swallow. And so that's an added extra value for those folks impacted by MS. Sleep is very important and even more important in the setting of MS. And exercise assists in getting better quality and better quantity of sleep. Literally, people who start to exercise as part of their lifestyle will get their snooze on all the better. And lastly, exercise facilitates fun. You want to seek out forms of exercise that don't stink, things that you actually enjoy. Moreover, by staying in shape through exercise, you're going to be much more able to engage your children and grandchildren, play with your pets, and improve the overall quality of your life. Let's have some fun. The most impactful thing that you could do to help this channel grow is to watch another video. So if you'd like to up your game, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next live stream, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.